Professional football in America is a special game, a unique game. Played nowhere else on earth, it is a rare game. The men who play it make it so. One of these men is Jack Lambert, the feared middle linebacker of the powerful Pittsburgh Steelers. Legend has it, he ate glass and pounded his head against lockers before waging war. He announced on a Monday night game that he hailed from Buzzard's Breath, Wyoming. He decreed that all quarterbacks should wear dresses. He was Count Dracula in cleats, the remorseless linebacker for Pittsburgh. Do you think there should be any rules changes for the safety of the quarterback? Well, uh, it might be a good idea to put dresses on all of them. Jack Lambert has taken on Cowboys, Redskins, Raiders, and Vikings. Jack Lambert was the single most intimidating force in football. Probably because he was toothless. Limited teeth. You know, with the no front teeth. With the Dracula fangs. He looks like Count Dracula in fleets. And I turned around and I looked at the guy. And when I realized he took his thing off, he didn't have his teeth up front. I went, wow. <laughs> No teeth, he's snarling, he's spitting, he's yelling at me, and I'm going, God, you can have all the money back. You can just just blink me out of here right now. I'll go be an accountant. I'll get you next time. <laughs> and probably because he looked kind of like a madman. Just his uh, Clint Eastwood ways. I don't care that, that my opponents like me. I care that they respect me, though. He was just going to do everything he could to make you feel pain until I heard the whistle. The single most intimidating force in the history of football. I can't believe it! Jack Splatt is really gonna ride Kenny Wood's new Raging Rapid! <laughs> Jack Lambert, revenge is always sweet. And guess who's coming with me, Myron? In high school, John Harold Lambert was a skinny quarterback and sharp-elbowed basketball player. Well, well Jack Lambert was a, a, a great linebacker. Played at Kent State uh, in, in college uh, with uh, my older brother, Daryl. However, in 1974, the Steelers picked him as a backup outside linebacker. Ham and Russell were fixtures there, but when inside linebacker Henry Davis was injured, a terror was unleashed. When the Steelers drafted Jack Lambert out of Kent State, he carried barely 200 pounds on his 6'4 frame. One of the Steelers' uh, administrative people looked at him, said, who's that? They said, that's our number two pick. And he goes, well, another wasted pick. To look at Lambert, he doesn't look like a middle linebacker. At 6'5", 218 pounds. But for the unlikely inspiration of Oakland's Mad Stork. And the amazing thing about Jack Lambert is he wasn't very big. Everybody said, oh, Jack, you know, you're a good football player, but you don't weigh enough. You've got to be at least 235, 240 to play. Well, I just couldn't put the weight on. How could he do that? He's, he's a skinny rail. I think he did two sets of bench presses. I think he did two sets of curls, lit a cigarette, and walked. A great hope for me because uh, when I saw him go into the pros, he was tall and skinny like I was. He doesn't pass the eye test, but he can play. Double wing line, ace! <laughs> That'll cool your ass off. And, and one of my former teammates, Booby Clark, they used to go at it all the time, and, and uh, he'd hit uh, Booby Clark, and, and he'd have Booby Clark on the ground, he might kick him or something just to give him a little extra hit. Over time now, there's kind of become this understanding that, that small running backs have an advantage because a lot of times linebackers can't see into the backfield. Angles and position, he never took the wrong step, and he was always the most focused man on the field. His height at middle linebacker may have been a, a positive in the reverse. Jack was one of those guys that was in on a lot of tackles. <laughs> I stopped the only time. He cut, he dipped in, went back outside, and was around the corner before I even got off the block. 
he may have had a better view of what the offense was doing, and that might explain why he seemed always to be one step ahead of things. That's what you've got to go over in your mind every single time. When you say 5-2, Mo cover one and break, you don't go stand at the line of scrimmage and see if, if there's any pretty girls in the stands over there, okay? You've got to be thinking out here. His greatest strength was his mind. And Jack Lambert was a wonderful football player. There's a big difference between athletes and football players. Lambert had an instinct for the game. He just seemed to make every tackle. That hole was there, he was in the hole, he made the tackle. None better than Jack Lambert to do that. If the best player in the middle of the field is making all the plays on the best team, maybe this is the best defender in the league. He just had a relentless competitiveness. You could see it in his eyes. Jack Lambert. Steelers linebacker Jack Lambert was an icon of the Steel City. As a matter of fact, Jack and, and, and one of my former teammates, Booby Clark, they used to go at it all the time. He'd hit uh, Booby Clark and, and he'd have Booby Clark on the ground. He might kick him or something just to give him a little extra hit. You can be average if you want to be, but if you want to be a great football player, you've got to concentrate and you've got to have the right intensity. But wham! He hit me with a forearm that you cannot believe. Lifted me up, put me flat on my back, went across the line of scrimmage and tackled Pete Johnson for a three yard loss. He tried to run through you. No one wanted to be hit by Jack Lambert, but everybody was hit by Jack Lambert. Well, after the play was over, I was still lying on the ground because Jack had hit me so hard, he had put me in a daze. A couple times out here yesterday when we were playing, some of you guys, and I got a little bit angry, but I, I get excited when I play. You got to get excited when you play football. You got to, all right? You got to be excited. If you don't want to get excited out here, then you got to go play tennis or something like that. And Jack saw me lying there, and he walked over to me, stood over top of me, looked down at me. And he said, Griffin, if you ever, if you ever try to block me again, I'll bite your head off. Pretty much every play, the quarterback was staring directly at Lambert, who had not only this very scary appearance, but this incredibly active appearance. First snap I ever took. I mean, Jack Lambert's standing across me in Pittsburgh, my first regular season, and Jack Lambert's across, playing middle linebacker. And Quarterbacks couldn't skirt past Lambert who became a frequent visitor to opposing backfields and a permanent fixture in Steelers lore. What you've seen of Jack Lambert, Holy what you've heard about his reputation is all true. I never looked at professional football as a popularity contest. He was certainly the most intimidating player on a pretty intimidating team. Interference! Oh, you I never looked at professional football as a popularity contest. I look at it uh, as my job. Number 58 considered it his job to hit someone on every play. I don't care that, that my opponents like me. I care that they respect me, though. I think sometimes I got the feeling people thought I was a dirty football player, and that always bothered me because I, I never went out and tried to hurt anybody or anything like that. Now, I, I can play. I can play any way you wanted to play it. I mean, we had some guys out there that, uh, from time to time that wanted to do some things that weren't legal, and I can, I can do that, too, if I have to. <laughs> But I'd rather play by the rules and play fairly. But I don't think that, that you intimidate. You know, there's no cowards out there on that field, buddy. Lambert had some choice words for Ram running back Wendell Tyler, a full transcript of which is available for mature audiences only. When one of his teammates received an out-of-bounds cheap shot, Lambert had another job to perform. He raced the length of the bench to exact the punishment. He thought it his duty to teach the Browns a lesson because as a kid, he loved them. And they didn't draft him. But the ferocity that made Lambert both feared and fabled wasn't a complete picture. Good thing I cut my terrible towel. It sure is, Myron. He was an uh, enforcer. Jack Lambert is so mean, he doesn't even like himself. But it was in Super Bowl X when Captain Jack first earned his reputation as an intimidator and enforcer. Roy Jarella attempts a field goal and misses it. Cliff Harris, who's rushing, sees the kick go wide. Jarella just missed his second field goal. Now Lambert's walking by. Here's Harris telling him something and grabs the kicker. And he pats Jarella on the helmet as if to say, 
Hey, thanks. It wasn't something that I sat down and planned to do. You know, I didn't think about things out there. I just reacted. And grabs the kicker. And Lambert at 6'5", works him over. And Lambert at 6'5", works him over. And he goes back and he grabs Cliff Harris and throws Cliff Harris on the ground. Jack Lambert was after Cliff Harris. Jack Lambert kind of put him in his place. Well, now Lambert's walking by. Here's Harris telling him something. And the Cliff Harris incident in the Super Bowl out there, I never thought about doing something like that. Nobody can. Hey, what's up, my friend? Calic and I here. In a moment, I'm going to step into my office here at my home and pull out my computer and show you exactly, you know, how it is that I went from barely scraping by. In the Super Bowl out there, I never thought about doing something. Grabs the kicker, and Lambert at 6'5", works him over. And Lambert at 6'5", works him over. And he goes back and he grabs Cliff Harris and throws Cliff Harris on the ground. Jack Lambert was after Cliff Harris. Jack Lambert kind of put him in his place. Well, now Lambert's walking by. Here's Harris telling him something. And the Cliff Harris incident in the Super Bowl out there, I never thought about doing something like that. Nobody came to Cliff Harris's defense on the Dallas side. Did it change the energy on the field? Absolutely it did. But I saw him whacking Roy on the helmet. I turned around and I just grabbed him and threw him down. And that it just happened just like that. They became the intimidators again. And Lambert at 6'5 works him over. It helped further define what Pittsburgh Steeler football Jack Lambert is all about. He was a guy who was always trying to jaw with other people, but uh, he backed it up. The Pittsburgh Steelers had won back-to-back -back titles coming into the 1976 season. But early results suggested their blue-chip Super Bowl stock was headed for a crash. 
Four losses in their first five games left the Steelers almost lifeless. I remember after we lost the fourth game, I was sitting there by my locker next to Jack Ham, who dressed by me. And we just looked at each other and said, what is going on? Reserve quarterback Mike Kruchek took over for an injured Terry Bradshaw against the division-leading Cincinnati Bengals. The turning point was at hand. We were down to one quarterback, and, uh, and Cincinnati knew it. At least Bo Harris knew it, I guess. And, uh, and Mike was scrambling, and he, he ran out of bounds, and Harris gave him a shot. It wasn't a real vicious shot, but it was a pretty good shot. So I went down the line and gave him one back. At that time, all we were trying to do was survive. The real steel curtain answered Lambert's call. What followed was the most amazing defensive streak in modern history, the dimensions of which offer statistical delights to even the most casual football historian. Well, I brought this book out. I just want to just read something here. I, I had to look up exactly what we did as a defense. It's real short. I just wanted to read it. Uh, after losing four of his first five, the team wins ten straight. The defense does not allow a touchdown in 22 consecutive quarters, nor in eight of the last nine league games, and totally blanks five of its last eight opponents. You know, and I, and I had forgotten how good we were, but that's just incredible football on the part of our defense, and I know that Art Rooney Sr. felt this way, too. The 1976 football team was the best team the Steelers ever had. players with a great deal of pride, great deal of intensity, great deal of confidence, and obviously great ability. And um, to put that string together uh, was not anything exceptional. It was what we were supposed to be doing. And uh, we were having fun. And it was not a precious situation necessarily. We told you it would get back on track, and it did. And uh, we went up there and we crushed them. Totally crushed them. And we were really on a roll. And there was no doubt in our minds we were going to go all the way. And Oakland had a good team that year, but we knew we could beat them. And then uh, when Rocky and Franco got hurt, it just, you know, it took the wind out of ourselves. Franco Harris and Rocky Blyer each rushed for 1,000 yards during the 76 season. But in the AFC Championship game, both sat out with injuries. Never had to play a game where our two-star running backs were out. And I had made the comment that, you know, give us a six-pack and we'll go back out and play them again. Really the most frustrating game I ever played in my life. Like the 1950 Rams, the 1976 Steelers fell short of their goal. But the magnificence of their effort and the mind-boggling numbers they amassed earned them a special place in the annals of pro football. You know, there's been a lot of great defenses over the years. Going back to the Packers, you know, when I first started really watching football, they had some great players. But I really and truly believe that the 1976 Steelers defense was the best defense in the history of National Football League. During his 11-year career, Lambert won Defensive Rookie of the Year and Defensive MVP awards. Switch it, switch it. Every season, he led the team in tackles. For nine straight years, he bashed his way to the Pro Bowl. He made nine straight Pro Bowls and was the man in the middle of the steel curtain for four Super Bowl wins. Today, there's a new field for Jack Lambert, and that's in Alliance, Ohio, where he spends his summers molding intelligent linebackers and responsible citizens. Good stretch today, good stretch. Last full day of camp, we don't want any pulled muscles now. All right. <laughs> good job. Eventually, the kid the Steelers took a chance on was chewing out all pros like Jack Ham. It's possible that Jack Ham was a greater outside linebacker than Lambert was as a middle linebacker. The middle linebacker is supposed to be the leader. I could never understand why some people had to be motivated. But I don't imagine opponents fearing Jack Ham the way they would fear Lambert. Uh, but, uh, and I, I tried not to yell and scream too much, but sometimes when we were playing very poorly, you know, I felt that a few words were necessary, and that's usually when I did my yelling and screaming. I can't tell you that Jack and I 
are the best of friends. I remember he came in the locker room. It's towards the end of our rookie season. And Jack just stopped for a moment, and he looked over, and he goes, hey, Swan. I look up, and he goes, yeah, Jack, what's up? He goes, you should have been number two. I should have been number one. And he just walked away. You should take pride in the fact that you're, you're one of the very few people in the world that can do what you're doing, play in the National Football League. And you should go out here and try and be the best you can be, you know, game after game. One of the articles that one of the uh, local media people did, he had covered the uh, Denver Bronco locker room, and there was a sign hanging that said, number 58 comes to play. He will always be perceived as the greatest personification of what Steeler football is supposed to be like. That's what Lambert represents. Welcome, Jack Lambert. Pittsburgh likes to sort of perceive itself as having a certain kind of toughness, having a certain kind of team. Lambert really represents that. And there's never going to be a guy who replaces that in Pittsburgh. And hopefully when it's all over, you can look back on your career and be proud of it, you know, as I am of mine. If I could start... Hopefully you can look back on your career and be proud of it, you know, as I am of mine. Pittsburgh likes to sort of perceive itself as having a certain kind of toughness, having a certain kind of team. Lambert really represents that. And there's never going to be a guy who replaces that in Pittsburgh. And hopefully when it's all over, you can look back on your career and be proud of it, you know, as I am of mine. If I could start my life all over again, I would be a professional football player. And you damn well better believe I'd be a Pittsburgh Steeler.